Hello, little dear friend. Hi there, silly. Are you eating the seaweed? Are you eating the seaweed on my rice bed? Oh dear, well, you can't eat all of it. You have to save some for the basil, okay? Oh my goodness, I've never been so close to a dear friend. He was a little tyke, and he had a little brother. But little brother is not with us anymore, I don't think. They were little tiny spindly leg fellows last, last spring. Okay. That's enough to get pictures. <laughs>
next to the kale that I planted the other week. I found this little bird hanging out around the greenhouse and I found out later it appears to be what's called a uh, Oregon dark-eyed junco and they say it primarily eats insects and I think that what it's chewing on right now is a moth so I kind of figure you be a carnivore I'll be an herbivore and we'll get along just fine and I've just seen it just by itself hanging out here kind of around the rock edges and I don't know maybe it's got a nest or something so it might be around for a while Oh my gosh, you guys, I just spent hours researching tools and supplies that I've been needing to get for a really long time. And then I've just spent at least an hour or so on the phone trying to get the stuff shipped to Alaska. So I wanted this wheel hoe for my pathways. And they said $367 just for shipping. So I said, no, let's not do that. Let's do the free shipping from Georgia to Seattle, Washington. Put it on the barge and then I'll pay a minimum hundred dollar fee to get it up to Wrangell. So that made it uh, for the unit and some hose $280 and then I'll pay the shipping fees when it arrives here. Then I talked to Johnny's um, and I got Jessica on the phone thank goodness because she was really patient and helpful and we went through item by item and there were some things where the shipping surcharge to Alaska was more expensive than the item itself and so I said no to the flats and trays. I'll figure something else out. And then also the wire support for the insect netting. Um, so expensive and for the shipping and then plus it was drop shipped from a different manufacturer so it wouldn't have been able to go all in one package, which is what we were trying to do, get it um, all in one package shipped to the barge in Seattle, Washington. So what we ended up doing, you know, I wanted this wire hoe and so the handle being an odd shape we just sent that separately, U.S. Postal Service, um, to my P.O. box, and that was reasonable. And then um, trying to get onto one package was the collinear hoe kit that goes on the top of the handle, also the wire head kit, which goes on top of the handle. And then this irrigation kit, which is drip line for my greenhouse for the basil. And then also this insect netting, which is pretty expensive, but I need something that lets in more light and air. And so then um, she's gonna check to see um, and call me back to see if they can get it in one package. Um, and then that would be $610. Then I talked to the Grow Organic folks and asked about like their 50 pound bags of fertilizer and rock phosphate and stuff. And they said, shipping to Alaska is so expensive. So I said, okay, I'll figure something else out. Let's not do that. We'll just get the water timer for the drip hose and the re replacement rose for my watering can, which I have taped together right now, $75 total. And then um, previously I had ordered through Territorial Seed Company some additional basil seed, onion seed, and spinach. So yeah, shipping to Alaska, what a pain in the butt. Hi little buddy, what are you doing? I wonder how close I can get to you before I scares you away. I have to go to the greenhouse and work on him. Gee, Willikers, you're not scared of me at all, hardly. <laughs> silly goose, you're a silly.
been digging a trench along the edge of the greenhouse here. An attempt to kind of tip it over this direction so I don't have to fill quite so much on this side. Okay, so this little ditch along the edge of the greenhouse here seems to have leveled things out. And quite the gap in the front. And it's a little bit more even across there. I've got the far side of the greenhouse tucked in at the bottom. The mosquito's trying to bite my finger. And we've got a little tiny gap under this um, north edge of the greenhouse. But I've got to go eat, so I'm not going to fill it in right now. And that's the only thing that needs to be filled in still. This is the near end of the greenhouse. All filled in at the bottom. And I've got uh, the side of the greenhouse. The potato boxes is all filled in. And I've dug a trench because this kind of side is low and I want the water to flow down there before it hits the greenhouse. We'll see how that works. The transplant soil mix that is in the tarp there, I've got so much of it that I can't even drag it around. So I'm going to put it into these boxes and then move those under cover. And then I've got another tarp which has some dried compost and I think I can just drag that under cover. Um, it's supposed to rain in another few hours so I'm going to try and get this done quick uh, and uh, beat the rain hopefully. <laughs> got the boxes of transplant soil mix stashed beside the peat moss under the ledge here. Got the boxes covered in tarps and the dry compost in its little tarp there in front of the compost bins. It's just starting to sprinkle. And that deer is back on top of that little bit of soil there where the greenhouse was. No, this is a different deer. He's got like a white nose. And then I see another one over in the brush. Ah, silly fellows. Yeah, you can't see it, but there's another deer a little bit farther back in the room. Huh, I wonder if those are the two brothers.